Hi, and welcome to this video lecture, Made You Look, Chip Kids Book Cover Designs. I'm Todd Duran, Professor of Graphic Design at Spring Hill College. You can find out more information about me, my design courses, and my students at designmylife.org. When we pick up a book, we're responding to the work of a graphic designer. Designers create the look and style of that book by using images, color, and typography. Chip Kidd is a book designer whose work I've admired for years since designing covers at the University of Illinois Press. His work goes beyond simply showing you a character or situation from the book. He uses images in startling and sometimes humorous ways. A giant of the New York graphic design world, Kidd has more than 800 covers to his credit for authors including John Updike, James Elroy, and many more. This cover design for Michael Crichton's science fiction novel, Jurassic Park, included the dinosaur skeleton that would become the visual identity of this bestseller when it was made into a film by Steven Spielberg in 1993. Kidd's cover design was used with permission in the film advertising and packaging, making his work highly visible. Poetry can be a real challenge to illustrate, but this collection of poems by Mark Strand has a simple title that's simply illustrated. The man and the camel both put their best foot forward as we are forced by the odd cropping of the photo to notice their feet. These cover designs both use Photoshop editing to add a surreal touch. The cover on the left for a play by E.L. Doctorow uses Photoshop blurring to let us look through a glass of liquor as if we're drinking it ourselves. In the book cover on the right, the designer uses a photo of his own hand with an extra finger added to illustrate the possible side effects in the title. The cover on the left here uses a photo of a mundane stuffed animal, but he's standing on his head. The simplicity of the layout or position of the elements uh, is what makes this um, seem kind of normal, but then the photo itself uh, creates a sort of a disquieting and totally unexpected mood. On the right, we see another visual surprise. Since the title is The Mind's Eye and it uses vision as a metaphor, Chip Kidd's design recreates an eye chart using the author's name and title. The random blurring of typography which is usually in graphic design always in sharp focus, plays with the viewer's expectations. In this cover design for Marty Asher's The Boomer, he uses retro illustrations, mid-century modernist typography, and a photocopy of an old comb for a cover that recreates new combinations from old images and text. James Elroy writes hard-boiled detective novels with guns, cops, and crime. And for this series of covers, Chip Kidd found an artist who uses old paperbacks, cutting and folding the covers to make vintage illustrations come to life. Then he added a sort of 1940s Art Deco typeface to give the series a period feel. Sometimes his designs go against the expectations in the text, as in this very wet design for the memoir titled Dry. It appears that the designer used an inkjet printer and then used water to make it run like a wet watercolor painting. Chip Kidd's a collector of the offbeat, and this cover includes an extreme close-up of a rather paranoid-looking doll that might be from his collection. The doll's expression suggests that perhaps the little friend has a darker side. Robert Hughes is a Time Magazine art critic who hosted the PBS series Shock of the New. The cover of this collection of his essays takes us behind the scenes by showing us the back of a painting. The fact that it might also be read as a negation of art, a turning to the wall, makes it even more provocative. His design here for Cristina Garcia's Dreaming in Cuban uses a, a beautifully rendered illustration that looks as if it might have come from an early 20th century advertisement, maybe for uh, a liquor or maybe for um, a trip to Cuba, a vacation of some kind. Um, it really creates an interesting mood, particularly the way that the figure is cropped.
Chip Kidd grew up near uh, John Updike, the novelist, and this cover uses a detail of a painting with the brush strokes that just begin to form a face. The image grabs my eyeballs over time and leaves me fascinated. Uh, and it works so well with the title, Seek My Face. Humorist David Sedaris became famous for reading his Santa Land diaries on public radio, but I didn't expect this strange cover on his first book. Of course it was a chip kid design that appears to include a scientific photo of twins and their inexplicably extended tongues from some long-forgotten high school health book, probably. His follow-up book was titled Naked, which would have been too easy to design, really. Um, but instead of full frontal nudity, we get a pair of tire old, tired old boxer shorts, uh, less sexy and a lot more funny. Uh, his third and fourth books, also designed by Chip Kidd, uh, include uh, two different approaches. Uh, and this is one thing that's uh, interesting about Chip Kidd is he he um, he has a, he has style and and he may. Um, do several de designs that are along a similar vein, uh, but in this case he really switches things up quite a bit. Um, in this third design for um, David Sedaris, he uses the detail of a Vincent Van Gogh painting with a skull smoking. Uh, that's really funny, especially since Sedaris's uh, work in this book included some essays on how uh, how he was struggling to stop smoking himself. Uh, for me, talk pretty one day. Uh, he does something um, also pretty unexpected. Uh, it's a handwritten uh, typography cover that looks as if the whole thing were just scrawled on a chalkboard and a photo was taken of it. Very kind of straightforward, but it sort of implies the idea of like learning a language or attending a class or something like that. Of course, in the right context, Naked can be nice. In this softcore slide, Vogue magazine fashion editor Elisa Santisi styled the summer accessories shoot with Dutch model Dutzen Kroos. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Pretending to read Sedaris's novel as she's photographed by Terry Richardson. No word whether she got an autographed copy of the book. Here's another book by the same author, illustrated with a fork bent into wolf claws. Uh, I say by the same author. Um, we saw the work of Augustine Burroughs earlier. You might remember the six-fingered hand. Uh, so here we have another hand, but this time it's made out of a fork again. Um, the idea here might be transforming this mundane domestic object into something menacing, much as the author's father is transformed in the book itself. Clever ideas are often imitated, however. Notice the ad on the left for a reality show that uses a very similar fork, this time bent into a we're number one finger gesture. Kids' work often celebrates texture and detail, as in this cover that mimics the fading and wear of a vintage poster or matchbook cover to recreate the mood and setting of a fictional World War II story. This biography of comic artist Alan Moore uses photos of the author as book jackets to create its own cover image from books lined up on a bookshelf. This erotic novel from fashion designer and socialite Gloria Vanderbilt is illustrated with a photo of a mannequin, probably copied and pasted in Photoshop, to create its own twin, representing the two women in the book and their obsessive relationship. One reviewer on Amazon loved this new translation of the Bible from the Greek by the Greek scholar Richard Lattimore, but he objected to the cover photo, calling it unfortunate and repulsive. Really? The Chip Kid design uh, Chip Kid designs covers for bestsellers, and with over six billion of them published, the Bible is a real blockbuster. And in the end, Kid's cover does just what Lattimore's translation does. It interprets the text in a clear, compelling, and honest manner. The design fast-forwards through 2,000 years of sacred art, stopping instead at the work of contemporary and controversial photographer Andres Serrano. For readers brave enough to leave 2,000 years of baggage behind, this design offers us a new New Testament. Not many book designers are also writers, but in 2001, Chip Kidd's first novel, The Cheese Monkeys, was released. 
The story is about a graphic design student in the 1950s, and the design is full of clever tricks, including wrappers that slide on and off of the hardback covers. The paperback edition of the same book uses illustrations to replace the two nouns in the title, creating a rebus. Kidd's second novel came out in 2008, and the cover combines a life-sized illustration of the protagonist with a diet with a black jacket carrying the typography. I don't know where the word diet came from. Sorry about that. Um, but what I'm trying to tell you is that the black part of this jacket is the only part that's actually a jacket. In other words, it's sort of like a, a cropped jacket. That, that diagonal line is actually the edge of the piece of paper. And the red illustration, this kind of uh, cartoon of this uh, crazed person in glasses, which is really the lead character, that's actually printed on the hardback cover itself. Chip Kidd's book designs have redefined how books look, using unexpected juxtapositions to spark the imagination of the reader. He treats book covers as small, precise posters, the kind of thing that is surprising, intriguing, funny, and at the same time deadly serious. Inspired by anything from surrealism to Japanese candy boxes, Chip Kidd offers art that is born in the marketplace but lives on in libraries. And speaking of libraries, I'll close with this photo. I recently visited this amazing place, the New York Public Library, to research 15th century books and typography. I was so taken with the place that I invented an entire afterlife scenario around it. I figure that if you love books like we all do, and like Chip Kidd must also, when you die, you go here to the Rose Reading Room to spend eternity reading novels, poetry, or whatever you love. But if you're bad, you're forced to read self-help books on a Kindle. And to learn more about Chip Kid, uh, you can also go to dwell.com and do a search for design leader Chip Kid. Um, there's a great uh, about a four and a half minute video there, and you'll get to meet him, hear him talk about his work, see some of his designs, see his apartment, um, and also get to hear him play in a really good band that he has. So anyway, that concludes my lecture. Um, I'm Todd Duran, and thanks for listening.